I am turning over every rock I can think of to find her. Now at 11, family and friends are desperate for answers as they search for a missing mother from Aloha. We'll hear from the ex-husband, plus. It's quite the undertaking to mount this many resources uh, in short notice. Hundreds of Oregon firefighters arrived in California tonight to fight the awful flames spreading across that state. And the November election is just nine days away. We'll take a closer look at what's on your ballot. The News at 11 starts right now. This is KGW News at 11. We begin in Washington County, where worry and fear grip the friends and family of a missing mom. Erin McClintock disappeared six days ago after dropping her kids off at school in Aloha. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Doris in for Maggie Vespa. Dozens gathered for a vigil tonight. Our Lindsay Nadrich was there. What's the latest, Lindsay? Well, Aaron's car was found Thursday in a parking lot in Beaverton. Investigators checked it and found no obvious signs of a struggle, but are not ruling anything out. You all being out here means so much. Words of thanks from Reed McClintock, the ex-husband of the missing woman. Her friends are here too, keeping the search for Aaron McClintock going. I've just felt really helpless and wanted to raise awareness and I want to bring her home. The mother of three vanished after dropping her kids off at Aloha High School last Monday. Aaron's supervisor called when she didn't show for work in Hillsborough that day. Her family desperately wants to know what happened. I don't know. I am turning over every rock I can think of to find her. Any clue. We've gone through the house. I don't know how many times just looking, searching for any type of anything. Her disappearance has left a gaping hole in the tight-knit Aloha community. I've known Erin for seven years and she was at every single football game in this last football game. She wasn't there. She wasn't there in her signature spot and we all felt it. Aloha's a big family and that's, they've always been and she's been involved in this family for a long time. She has a lot of support here. I, I think that's important for her to know. Just three days ago, a friend spotted Aaron's car parked outside the Twalton Hills Aquatic Center. The Washington County Sheriff's Office searched it, but found no obvious clues, no signs of a struggle. Even so, detectives are working the case and not ruling anything out. We need to get her home and we need to know she's okay. That's critical. That's what, what I would ask everybody. Please help me get my boy's mom home or at least know that she's okay. Please. Deputies say they've received a lot of tips in this case, but believe there are more people out there who may know something that could help. So if you've seen Aaron or you have any information, no matter how small, you are asked to call the Washington County Sheriff's Office at 503-629-0111. Back to you. Thanks, Lindsay. Now to an update on a shooting at Park Rose yesterday. The man shot was 18 years old and he has died. Police say Jackson Panya Nuvong was shot near Northeast Wygant Street and 109th Avenue. Police are not releasing information about a suspect. They want anyone who knows anything about the shooting to give them a call. In California, more bad news on the fire lines. The monster fire north of San Francisco continues to rage. Here in Oregon, nearly 300 men and women drove most of this day and night to California to help out. They're about an hour away from their staging areas right now. The Inferno forced 200,000 people from their homes in the Kincaid fire. That's the one north of the Bay Area, and it's the largest one burning right now. Let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri now with a look at what Oregon crews are going to do to help. Yeah, dozens of crews are heading down there as we speak. And Pat, as part of that big group, you mentioned about 100 firefighters with the Twilight Fire and Rescue left earlier today. Now, the plan is to stay overnight in Redding, California and be on the front lines by tomorrow. It has been a busy day for the firefighters with Twilight Valley Fire and Rescue, as you can imagine. Many of them walked into work earlier this morning only to find out they would be heading down to California and they have to and they had no idea how long they could be down there. Earlier tonight, I spoke with a spokesperson with the fire marshal's office who told me the firefighters have been split into two groups. One group is heading to fight the Burris fire. The second group will be fighting the Kincaid fire. That's a little close to 55,000 acres tonight. That's the fire that has been burning out of control since last week and is only 10% contained. The challenge for crews so far, dry fuels and extremely windy conditions. We sent what's called the strike team, and a strike team is a group of same resources, and so those are our heavy brush rigs, um, and so they're specifically designed for that wildland interfa interface type fire. 
The state's fire marshal office hasn't said if they'll be dispatching more Oregon crews, but uh, they're up uh, against a, some dangerous wildfires, some historic amount of acreage that has burned and that is going to continue to burn. As we look at some of the current conditions out there right now in terms of the wind speeds, it's just going to continue to pick up over the next uh, 24 hours or so. There is good news. Cooler temperatures will start to move in, I'd say, by Tuesday afternoon, and it won't be uh, seeing any threat of rain, but they're still going to be seeing some cooler conditions and the winds will start to die down. So so as we put the future cast into motion, here we are late tonight. We're still going to be looking at gusts anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour. Things are slowly improving. You might remember last night when we were talking about these wildfires near the Kincaid area or the Kincaid fire gusts were expected to be anywhere from 75 to 80 miles per hour. That just makes it that much more challenging for these crews to get a hold of these fires. So you can see by tomorrow afternoon, the winds really subside. It's probably the best conditions in terms of uh, lack of wind. These crews have probably seen in the last couple of days, and that's going to be the case over the next couple of days, but still that red flag warning is going to be in place. And talking about what they saw earlier today, talking about some of that cooler temperatures that will kind of help them out a little bit. Highs throughout Santa Rosa and the San Francisco area were close to 70 degrees down in Southern California. Most of the weekend we saw temperatures in the mid to the upper 80s. Well, today we topped out in the low to mid 70s throughout much of Southern California, Santa Barbara, and that's going to be the case over the next couple of days as well. We have the red flag warning and basically again all the advisories we've been telling you about the last couple of days really haven't been lifted. If anything, they have been extended. So as we look at the fire weather warning through parts of Redding, Chico and into the San Francisco area, that's in effect until tomorrow morning about 11 o'clock. You travel south a little bit. There's some freeze warnings, believe it or not, throughout the Apple Valley area just east of LA, but still fire weather warning will be in place through a good part of the Los Angeles area all the way into tomorrow night. I'll talk more about your local forecast coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Joe. Now to some international news. We've learned that the U.S. was able to track down the world's most wanted terrorist leader with the help from a mole inside ISIS. President Trump confirmed this morning that the ISIS leader died during a military raid on his safe house in a rural part of Syria. NBC News reports the operation involved 100 elite troops and eight helicopters. Dogs chased him into a tunnel where he took three of his children before detonating a suicide vest, killing them all. They blasted their way in, and then uh, all hell broke loose. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. He was whimpering, screaming, and crying. Kurdish officials say they had an informant inside ISIS who passed information back to the Kurds, which they shared with the U.S. President Trump has been criticized by both parties for pulling troops out of northern Syria, which allowed Turkey to invade and attack those Kurds. Back locally now, Election Day just around the corner, November 5th. One of the big questions for voters has to do with Portland Public Schools and your taxes. KGW's Brittany Falkers takes a closer look at what supporters call the Portland Teachers Levy. This is the Multnomah County Voters Pamphlet. It's jam-packed with everything you need to know for the special election November 5th. Inside, you'll find Measure 26207. It's the 2019 Portland Teachers Levy. Now, it's a bit clunky to explain, but basically voters will decide whether they want to renew a tax that would collect a buck ninety nine per one thousand dollars of value of an assessed home. In the district, the average home is about two hundred thirty four thousand dollars. That homeowner will be paying four hundred sixty five dollars a year. Now, this levy did pass back in 2014, but it's ending and advocates want you to do it again. It is enormously important for our kids. It makes sure that we have um, enough very high quality, highly skilled, highly experienced teachers in the classroom helping kids. Sunday, school board members and volunteers were out talking to voters in the Irving neighborhood. This is an off-cycle election, so the big issue is going to be turnout. We need people to turn in their ballots. This isn't Otto Schell's first time going door to door. He's the legislative director for the Oregon PTA. We, the voters locally, can tax ourselves to keep a higher quality in the classroom. It's really important. The PTA response, once people realize that this, is, this reaches so far and it's on the ballot right now, has been very positive. The levy's projected to raise close to $100 million in its first year, and in total, more than half a billion over five years. So where does that money go? Officials say over the past five years, it paid for more than 800 teaching positions each year. That's about one third of all teaching positions in Portland Public Schools. The new levy would keep paying for that. The district says if that goes down, jobs could be lost.
The district says the money will also be used to help pay for arts programs, maintain class sizes, and provide supports such as reading specialists. Those are the kinds of specific interventions that we know help kids, help all kids, and are particularly helpful for the kids who may be coming from challenging circumstances. It's important to remember that this is not the only place that schools get money. They get a basic level of funding from the state. And a new business tax will raise about a billion dollars for schools across the state each year. But school board member Rita Moore warns PPS is only guaranteed $39 million from that tax. Remember, Thursday is your last day to mail in your ballot. After that, you should take it to your nearest drop-off site. Election day is November 5th. Back to you. All right. Well, Portland voters are not the only ones voting when it comes to levies, especially in November. Clackamas and Washington County voters will see a bond and levy question as well. You can find more on that and what else you'll see on your local ballot at KGW.com. And in the Portland area, you'll see a few other interesting measures on your ballot. One would give more protections to the Bull Run watershed where we get our drinking water. It would add environmental and land use restrictions. Another would allow the city to use Portland Water Fund money instead of general fund money during times of emergency. Using that water fund for anything other than water projects has been a real touchy issue in Portland. And the regional government metro has a $475 million bond measure on the ballot. It would replace two other measures that are ending. The money would be used for environmental projects, parks, and other priorities of metro. Election Day coming up nine days away now on November 5th.